The word monk comes from a Greek word monikos, which means single or solitary. Hi, I am Brother Francisco Whitaker, and this is All Good in the Brotherhood. Today we're just going to answer a really basic question. What the heck is a monk? Because some of you, you know, might be watching these videos and like, yeah, yeah, I totally know what a monk is, but others like, a, a monk? I thought those only lived like back in the Middle Ages, um, they're, they're still around? Or if you actually Google monk, pretty much all the pictures that come up are Buddhists and they consider, they call themselves monks as well. So why are we both called monks and what even is a monk anyways? So the word monk comes from a Greek word monikos, which means single or solitary. Now that might sound strange because don't monks live in a community? Don't they live with other monks? Well, it's reflective more of the monk's relationship. The monk is to be single or solitarily living only for the Lord. Yes, he might do it in community, but his relationship, his whole goal in life is to desire nothing and depend on nothing but Christ. So that, you know, I'm not married. I don't have a spouse because I am living only, hopefully, <laughs> that's why we're striving to live every day only for the Lord. Now, Benedict, who's the founder of Western monasticism, he's not the founder of monasticism at all, but he's the founder of Western Catholic monasticism, understands that the best way in order to pursue Christ still personally and solely is with other community members to build you up, right? When the church was founded by Christ in the early days of the church, in the Acts of the Apostles, each individual was still pursuing Christ personally, but not singularly and not alone, separated from other people. Our relationship with Christ is still that, our relationship, personal, one-on-one. -on -one. But Christ founded the church as a community so that there's support of our brothers and sisters to help lead us closer to Christ. So monks, one who is solitary and alone in relationship with Christ, still lives in community with unity of others because it is the support of others that strengthens me when I'm down calls me out when I'm not doing what I should be doing, invites me to remind myself of the vows that I have taken to God and others. The communal aspect is not to take away from one's personal relationship with God, but rather to foster it even more. For just as scripture says, so as you know, iron sharpens iron, so must one man sharpen the other. The same thing applies here. So, where where do we live? What what do monks all do together? Well, we live in a monastery, which is basically just the word for the dwelling place of monks. And the monastery, at least that I live in here, is set up uh, so that each room feels a little bit like a cave. That's because our founder, St. Benedict, when he first began his pursuit of Christ personally and founded monasticism, he did so in a cave. He lived in a cave by himself and prayed. And that kind of seclusion is supposed to remind the monk that, yes, we are part of a community, but I still need to go to my inner room, my inner dwelling, as Christ says, to pray in secret to the Father. And what place is kind of more secret or solitary than a cave? So at least the way we set up the monastery is supposed to feel and look like a cave. But we still are reminded that we're, this Christian life is, again, not on our own. There's brothers who live right with us. So we live in a monastery and we pray together every day. We pray at in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, and at night to consecrate and dedicate the whole day to God. We dress in the same fashion. Um, and there's a video I have explaining the different parts of what we call the habit, what we put on. But we dress all the same for two reasons. One, because we are not trying to be individuals here. We're a community. While we have an individual personal relationship with God, we are not trying to be individualistic. So if we all wore different things, 
Well, some might be dressing very fancy, others might be dressing like total bums, but if we all wear the same thing, we are all one in communion of what we wear, but also no one stands out more or less than the other. No one appears or looks more or less significant than the other. But also the black is generally just to remind us of the new life we have taken on in Christ. Everything from the past has died, black like funeral, and the new life we have to Christ, as St. Paul says, is when baptism, we died to Christ. I put on this garment as like almost a different baptismal garment. It's black to remember I died with Christ, but now I live with him in this whole new life. So we dress the same way, we pray together. We also have all of our meals together. So we go right from prayer to eating together. And that's another extension of what we hear in the Acts of the Apostles, right? They met together for prayer and for the breaking of the bread. And that wasn't just the Eucharist, that was fundamentally the most important part of that breaking of the bread, but the early church, their celebration of the Eucharist involved also what was called an agape meal, which a love feast, that they would actually eat together in communion. St. Paul actually addresses the Corinthians about that. Going from prayer to eating is a reminder that all of who we are <laughs> is to be dedicated to Christ and is in this context of community. And finally, uh, just what, what do monks do on a daily basis besides prayer? Well, work, right? Our prayer that then needs to extend itself towards service to others. So a motto you hear a lot of Benedictines is Ora et Labora. It's actually an, a later edition of a motto of Benedictines, more in like the 1900s. Um, but it really does sum up what our whole life of monasticism is supposed to be. Prayer, aura, that roots and centers everything about who we are and what we do. And then labora, out from prayer, just like we're sent out from the mass to go and evangelize. So we are to go out from our prayer in service to others. So the, actually that the word labora in Latin has the word aura in it. So that even in our work, the prayer is still the center. So that our prayer should be an extension of our work, not something we do to bypass our prayer or as a substitution, but it is an extension of our prayer. And by doing so, if we work in service of others in a prayerful manner, we are now ministering as Christ calls us to. So that could be my brothers here in the monastery or to those whom we are called to serve in parishes, me in the college with the college students, whomever it is, by praying living, working together in community to support one another in our personal relationships with Christ, we are then able to well go out in our labora to actually witness and bring the love of Christ, as St. Benedict says, which we should refer nothing else to. Well, thank you for joining me. I hope this helped and that maybe you learned something about even what a monk is at all. If you found this video interesting, we please invite you to share it with others. Um, like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, do all that jazz. And yeah, I hope you have a wonderful God bless day. Adios.